Hi, and welcome to 3dmotive.com. My name is Stephen G. Wells, and I'm a senior 3D artist. In this quick tips and tricks tutorial, we're going to take a look at UV unwrapping in 3D Studio Max. I'm not using an outside program. I'm going to actually use 3D Studio Max to do this. Okay. For this, we've got uh, a sphere. We're just going to look at doing a quick uh, unwrap on it. With, with this sort of, what, what I'm going to show you, you don't actually need a UVW map on it. Uh, you could have one. I mean, let's just set it up. I mean, you could have one if you wanted to that's being projected from the top. Or you don't have to have one at all. You can go right into the Unwrap UVW. That's this button right here. If you're not sure where to find this, it's in the modifier list in 3D Studio Max. You just have to click that arrow and you'll scroll down, scroll down, scroll down. And unfortunately, I, you guys can't quite see it, but it's right there. There's Turn to Poly, Twist, and the next one is Unwrap UVW. So it's on the, on the modifier list. Unfortunately, it's off screen for this recording, but it is there. All right, so let's go ahead and just first uh, click on the Unwrap UVW. Now, technically, it doesn't look like anything's happened in particular. I'm going to hit G to turn off my grid. It's just basically prepped everything for you now to be able to work with the UVs. If I click on this Open UV Editor, this is the UV Editor. Let me go ahead and I'm going to turn off this little button, which is showing the active map. In this case, since we don't have an actual te texture on this, it gives a checkerboard, but I'm going to turn that off because it's a little hard to see. So there you go. That's basically <laughs> the UVs on this model uh, because technically we didn't have any. So we're going to go ahead and look to create some. So how we're going to do that, we can do a couple different ways. We can either do it from this, uh, from the UV editor. We can actually click on our vertices and work from there. Or, uh, usually a little easier is we can click on the modifier stack where it says Unwrap UVW, and we can click Edges, Verts, Faces. See if I click Face, I've got a face. Edge, here's an edge. Vertice, okay? Just so we can keep it on screen, keep it simple, all right? What we can look to do now is we can, we can unwrap this particular model actually a couple different ways. One of the ways we can look to do it is uh, the edge mode. So let's go ahead and grab edge and I'm just going to hold down my control key. I'm just going to click. I'm holding down my control key as I'm doing this so I can grab these edges and control. Alright, so I can now use this button right here, convert edge selection to seams and unfortunately the seams actually goes off the panel as I'm recording it but it does say convert edge selection to seams that means if I click on it see it just went blue that's creating the seam I can now do a quick peel or a quick peel mode whichever way and then look at it in here now it doesn't look like anything has changed but if I turn on my select by UV element that means I'll select one whole half of it whatever I can grab my vertice, grab a single vert, and I can now move this up. So we now have two completely different halves, okay? So it's it's just that simple. Of course, then you could then look to, you know, scale it down and get it fit into our one-to-one -one UV space. That's this particular area here. You know, we can get it in here, blah, 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 and go from there, okay? So it's pretty simple. Let's go ahead and I'm just going to collapse this, um, the stack and everything. We're going to, head, going to go ahead and add another UVW map just so we can add one on. And let's go ahead and do another unwrap UVW. Okay, in this case, what we're going to look to do is we're going to do the edge to edge mode. All right, now the edge to edge means, or the point to point, that means I'm going to go from vertice to vertice to vertice. Okay, the really cool thing about it is if I click this button right here, this is the point to point seams, right? I can click on one vertice and right now you see that line there? It's trying to follow me along. It's, it's saying like which edge are we going for? Which one are we shooting for? Okay, if I click this particular vertice, you can see it's created that nice seam right there. I can now continue the line there. I can go, let's say up here. In fact, I'll just go around this way. There we go. Grab that vertice. Let's go up to this one. I can grab that vertice. We'll go ahead and cut that there and right click it. With that done, we can instantly go to our peel mode. Let me go ahead and turn off this active map. 
And there you have the different pieces selected. All right. Now I didn't cut off this one edge right here uh, because that was this edge right here. But what I can do very simply is I can go ahead and grab this edge right here and I can go to tools and break. All right. So that just broke it. Now I can turn around and move things around. If I grab it as an element, I can grab this one vertice, it grabs the whole piece, it grabs that whole piece, this one. I can go ahead and scale this down now and move it up into our UV space. Can move this, scale that down a little bit. There we go. And we'll grab this and we'll move it over here. We'll do a little bit of a rotate on this one and then we'll scale it. So we'll just move it in a little. Actually, we don't need to scale it. We got it right on there. Now, if you want to see what your proportions are actually looking like, you know, if you want to see whether or not this section is too big or this one's too small, one of the smart things to do is add a checkerboard texture on this particular model. So I'm going to hit M. That's my material editor. Here's our material editor. I'm going to go ahead and go to the diffuse. I'm just going to click on that little box. It's going to say, oh, what do you want to do? Well, let's go to our standard maps. All right. We're going to find our checkerboard which is right here, checker, and hit OK. Now, I can tell you right now, the one, it, it, this is how many times it's repeated on the model, the tiling, the, the UV tiling. This is the U and this is the V. Let's go ahead and do 10 on both of these so we can see you know more of it. And let's go ahead and apply it to the model, and we're going to show it in the viewport. That's apply it to the model and show it for the viewport. So as you can see, this is what our model looks like with the different textures. Now, obviously, this is just a very quick demo, so you can see how some of it is stretched out. But even in the areas that aren't stretched out, you can see there's a different scale to this these particular pieces. This has you know a pretty uniform scale, but all of a sudden this piece is not. You can see it is a separate piece because we do have the seams there, but it's not in the same proportion, the same scale as the other. So what we might want to do is we might want to grab this piece and in order to scale it so it's a little bit bigger, so the, the squares are bigger, what we're going to have to do is scale this down a little bit. Okay, So if we scale it down, you can see where I'm now starting to match the proportions. Uh, it looks like a little bit more there. So there you go. That's kind of the proportion for that. Now obviously we wouldn't want to turn around and, and have this as one big piece like this because it's actually kind of rather wonky as you can see. We could have actually laid this up a couple different ways, but I wanted to show you how to do the point to point. By the way, if you ever, when you when you want to actually move just some vertices around as you need to, just check that off. That way, you can grab a single vertice, get into the move tool, and you can just move it around as you need to. It makes it simple. But you want you do want to make sure you try and keep all these pieces in proportion. You don't want to turn around and uh, get one too big or one too small. All right, I'm going to go ahead and just delete that. Let's go ahead and again, keeping it simple, we're just going to open up a box. We're going to, do, we're going to create a box. So there we go. There's our, our box. I'm going to convert it to an edible poly with my shortcut. And I'm going to use my shortcut to toggle it to max, ma maximum view. All right, so there's our box. Now again, we don't need UVs on this in order to do this. We can go right for the unwrap UVW. Now, if we look at this right now, you can see all those green edges are seams. If we go to our uh, UV editor, basically it's every single face has taken up one space of that. All right. Let's go ahead and I'm going to collapse this. I'm going to create a UVW map and I'm going to leave it just like that. I'm going to collapse the stack again. Again, this is just for demo purposes because I want to make sure you guys can see what we're doing. I'm going to go ahead and click and unwrap UVW and open our editor again. Okay, this time it's like there's no seams because it's looking at the whole object as one piece, which is just what I want. Now we can go back for editing our seams like we did. We can go ahead and in our vertices we can do the point to point. So I can click this here, 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 right click. I can now do another one here, 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 right click. Right click ends it. Let's say we do one here. 
Okay, let's do a rotate around and do one from here. Oops, sorry, here and here. All right, and let's go ahead and do a peel. And there we go. Right off the bat, you see, I've got that unwrapped really nicely. I can now go ahead and scale it in. Now, of course, I could have done it uh, by face and things like that. I could actually have laid this out so that uh, it would be almost one big line of polygons rather than even this. But this is just to show you the different variations you can get with it and still have it work out very nicely for you. Let's go ahead and really quickly bring up our uh, material editor. I'm going to go ahead and apply this material. Let's take a look at this. All right, so it's pretty uniform. It's nice, it's simple, it's clean, and that'll certainly work for when you're working on a model. You want to try and again, uh, you, again, you want to try and keep the your UVs proportion correctly. You don't want something like this. I mean, if you're going to grab something, let me show you on this particular face. We don't want something like this. That means there's a, going to be a lot of UV, a lot of detail in this one particular face, and that these particular faces don't get as much detail. It would mean you'd have to scale this model down again. You'd have to move it up, and I'll show you real quickly. Let's see, grab this to try and make this fit in. Just if, if this was, you know, if we had other things on the UV space and we didn't have a whole lot of room, you know, we'd have to move it over. And the bigger these squares are, is the less UV quality you're actually going to get on the particular model. So again, you want to try and keep your UVs as uniform as possible, wherever possible, okay? Anyway, uh, this has been a real quick jump into this. There's a lot more to explore with it, but this should give you a really good grasp of what you can do with the unwrapping functions in 3D Studio Max. My name's Stephen G. Wells, and this has been 3dmotive.com. Thank you very much.